president and founder of the CCG, dear Henry, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Mr. President, for the invitation to this year's forum. Once again, a very welcome opportunity offered by CCG for an open exchange of views. Quite a unique institution. I much appreciate it in all my years here in Beijing. Today's topic, global mobility, is of utmost importance. At the same time, it gives me the feeling of a déjà vu. It reflects indeed a topic we addressed last year already, global trade and mobility in post-pandemic times. It is, of course, not for by lack of uh, fantasy. It means that the times change and the problem remains. Mobility. The world is moving again. Swiss International Airlines had not enough uh, capacities to match the demand uh, from the market, which is booming, especially on transatlantic routes. Bookings are booming this summer in all tourist destinations. The same airline was obliged to suspend uh, flights to China. Circuit breaker rules have uh, killed the market. Those rules allow just uh, 5% of the pre-COVID capacities. In fact, uh, only one out of four monthly allowed flights had actually taken place. China is drifting apart from the rest of the world. The reasons are well known. It is not my role nor my intention to criticize uh, your choices, namely the zero case policy. It has been characterized by the words of the Director General of the World Health Organization as unsustainable. While not criticizing, it is undisputable that this choice has consequences. As an ambassador, I am particularly keen about the situation of my Swiss fellow nationals. Three years of isolation from the outside world, impossibility to travel to China, increasing difficulties for international schools have left marks. The downward tendency in numbers accelerates with several families deciding to leave China for good. The second center of interest to me are Swiss companies. The lockdowns and on-off economy induces large losses in profits. Besides immediate consequences, questions arise about the future. The attractiveness and the size of the market remain. But to decide new investments becomes challenging. No chairman of the board ever will decide a major investment based on a Zoom meeting. One needs to travel, to meet people, to see firsthand the places, to build up confidence with local authorities. And no member of a global board will take the burden of the three weeks quarantine. On the short term, a few decisions are already pending. Those who have established regional hubs in China, in mainland China, will have to resettle the hubs to other places in the region because it is not possible to travel to cover them from mainland China. Another layer of the question are high level political contacts. Without willing to be naive and play down international tensions, I bet that half of the misunderstanding could be dampened by the resumption of in-person diplomacy out of artificial settings and bubbles. Ladies and gentlemen, how often in these very premises dedicated to globalization, we have loaded the benefits of openness. Open markets, our bilateral free trade agreement has boosted our exchanges. Openness towards the markets themselves, whereas the state itself just creates favorable framework condition, exerting utmost restraint in being itself an economic actor. Globalization at the end of the day is economic rationality prevailing over and orienting political decision. We notice that politics is massively back in economy in China and security prevailing over economy. The war in Ukraine and international tensions are reshaping value chains, especially for energy sources and high-end technology. We practice openness in research. My embassy has issued in 2021 more visas to Chinese students than in 2019 before COVID. The number of Swiss students in China at the moment is practically zero. 
And finally, open borders, today's topic. Travel restrictions have become a blow to globalization. There is no globalization without confidence and no confidence without meeting in person, knowing each other, free movement of people. COVID might have rationalized the wild growth in business travel. After three years of Zoom meetings, we are aware of the urgency to move back to meeting in person. One cannot pursue globalization and total control at the same time. It is either or. I hope our Chinese partners understand that self-isolation will end up harming China in the first place and the rest of the world. Thank you very much.